Australia is considering an $80 billion mega project to build a 240 kilometer bridge connecting the island of Tasmania to the mainland, right across one of the most violent stretches of water on Earth. This structure would require more than four times the steel used in the world's current longest sea crossing, a colossal 1.8 million tons. That is enough steel to build the metal frame of more than 240 Eiffel Towers. The bridge would have to withstand constant hurricane force winds, rogue waves, and powerful, unpredictable currents for over a century. It is an engineering challenge so extreme, so vast, and so dangerous that many have called it impossible. But is it? Could humanity really build a bridge to connect an entire island state to its mainland? Or would the brutal forces of nature tear it apart? This incredible dream is not new. For over a century, the idea of conquering the Bass Strait has haunted Australia's greatest minds. To understand this obsession, we have to go back thousands of years. As recently as 14,000 years ago, a land bridge connected Tasmania to mainland Australia. But when the last ice age ended, rising sea levels flooded this connection, creating the Bass Strait and turning Tasmania into an island. Ever since, it has been isolated, relying completely on a lifeline of ships and planes for transport. This separation creates a huge economic challenge. To level the playing field, the Australian government spends billions on subsidies, like the Tasmanian Freight Equalisation Scheme, just to help Tasmanian businesses ship their goods to the mainland at a competitive price. These schemes have cost over $2 billion since they began, a constant weight on the national economy. For decades, visionaries have proposed a permanent solution, a fixed link. The debate has always been split between a massive bridge and an impossibly long tunnel. But the goal remains the same, to finally and permanently reunite Tasmania with the rest of the country. The economic reasons are clear, but the path to building it is anything but. To understand the true scale of this challenge, we have to journey into the heart of the Bass Strait itself, a place where nature's fury is relentless. What makes this stretch of water so uniquely dangerous? The answer lies in a global weather phenomenon known as the Roaring Forties. These are powerful westerly winds that circle the southern part of the globe between the latitudes of 40 and 50 degrees south. They are born from a simple process. Hot air rises at the equator and moves toward the poles. As the Earth rotates, this moving air is deflected, creating strong westerly winds. In the northern hemisphere, large continents like North America and Asia break these winds up. But in the south, there is almost no land to slow them down. They roar across thousands of kilometers of open ocean, building up incredible speed and strength. Tasmania and the Bass Strait are located directly in their path. This is not a place that just has occasional storms, it is a region of constant powerful wind, with speeds frequently reaching 55 kilometers per hour and gusting much higher. This relentless wind unleashes its energy on the water below, but the Bass Strait has a dangerous secret that makes the situation far worse. The strait is surprisingly shallow, with an average depth of only 50 to 70 meters. In a deep ocean, the wind's energy creates long, rolling swells. But in these shallow waters, that same energy is compressed, creating steep, chaotic, and extremely violent waves. Swells of 3 to 5 meters are common, and the sea is known for its treacherous conditions that can overwhelm even large ships. As if that were not enough, the strait is a battleground of powerful ocean currents. It is where the waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans meet, creating complex and strong tidal flows that can race at over 9 kilometers per hour, or 5 knots in some places. These currents pull and push at anything in their path, creating immense forces that a bridge foundation would have to resist every second of every day. And the challenges do not stop at the surface. The seabed itself is a hostile and varied landscape. It is not a flat, sandy bottom. Instead, it is a complex terrain of deep basins, underwater plateaus, and hard granite outcrops rising from the depths. Large areas are covered in thick layers of soft, unstable sand and mud, which is a terrible material to build on. On top of all this, there is a hidden geological threat. The entire region is what geologists call a failed rift basin, 
This means that millions of years ago, the continent started to tear apart here, but never finished the job. This process left behind a web of deep, ancient fault lines hidden beneath the seabed. While the area is not known for major earthquakes, Southeast Australia is considered a seismic hotspot. The 2021 magnitude 5.9 earthquake near Woods Point, Victoria, was the largest in the state's recorded history, and crucially, it occurred on a previously unmapped fault. A bridge designed to last 120 years must be able to survive a powerful earthquake from a fault that we may not even know exists today. Facing these impossible conditions, engineers cannot just build a normal bridge. They would need to create a structure on a scale never seen before, using technology pushed to its absolute limit. So how would you even begin to build a 240 km bridge in the middle of a permanent storm? First, you have to understand the sheer scale of the materials involved. The world's current longest sea crossing, the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, is 55 km long. The Tasmania Bridge would be more than four times longer. That Hong Kong Bridge required 420,000 tons of steel and over a million cubic meters of concrete. A simple calculation suggests the Tasmania Bridge would need a staggering 1.8 million tons of steel. That is enough steel to build the metal frame of over 240 Eiffel Towers. It would also need about 4.5 million cubic meters of concrete. That is enough concrete to fill 1,800 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The first and biggest challenge would be the foundations. To anchor hundreds of bridge piers in the violent sea, engineers would likely use massive concrete boxes called caissons. Each caisson is like a giant hollow building constructed on land, floated out to sea, and then carefully sunk to the seabed with pinpoint GPS accuracy. Once in place, it would be filled with thousands of tons of concrete to create a solid, immovable base. For the Great Belt Bridge in Denmark, each foundation weighed 32,000 tons. Hundreds of these would be needed for the Tasmania Bridge. In areas with soft mud, giant steel piles, each over 100 meters long, would have to be drilled deep into the seabed to reach solid rock. Like pushing giant needles into the earth until they hit bone. The bridge itself could not be a single design. It would have to be a hybrid, a chain of different structures linked together. Long stretches of elevated roadways called viaducts would cross the shallower parts but to cross the deep shipping channels, the bridge would need several enormous suspension or cable-stayed spans. These would require support towers soaring more than 250 meters into the sky, taller than any building in most major cities, just like the 254-meter towers of the Great Belt Bridge. To make the impossible distance manageable, the route would likely use King Island and the Ferno Islands as giant stepping stones, breaking one enormous bridge into a series of slightly less enormous ones. Even with the best design, traditional materials would quickly fail in this environment. The bridge would have to be built from materials of the future. Instead of normal concrete, it would use ultra-high performance concrete, or UHPC. This is a special mix with a very dense particle structure and tiny steel fibers inside, which act like rebar on a microscopic level to stop cracks before they can grow. This gives it a compressive strength of over 21,000 pounds per square inch, more than four times the strength of regular concrete, and makes it highly resistant to the corrosive salt water. All the steel used, from the reinforcing bars inside the concrete to the massive girders holding up the road, would need to be a special corrosion-resistant alloy. Metals like duplex stainless steel contain other elements like chromium and molybdenum that form a passive, self-healing protective layer, shielding the steel from rust and ensuring the bridge does not weaken over its 120-year lifespan. Finally, there is the logistical nightmare. The middle of the bridge is 120 kilometers from the nearest land. You cannot simply send workers and materials out each day. The project would require building huge, semi-permanent bases in the middle of the ocean. These would be like giant floating factories and towns, self-contained habitats operating for over a decade in the world's roughest seas. A massive fleet of specialized ships, including floating cranes capable of lifting thousands of tons, would be needed to assemble the bridge piece by piece. It would be the largest and most dangerous maritime construction project in human history. 
the engineering is breathtaking, a testament to what is theoretically possible. But even if we could build it, there is one final massive hurdle that could stop this project before a single piece of steel is forged. The staggering cost and the unavoidable consequences. The estimated price tag of $80 billion is just a starting point. History shows us that mega-projects almost always go over budget. The Channel Tunnel connecting England and France cost 80% more than planned, while Boston's Big Dig cost 220% more. An 80% overrun on the Tasmania Bridge would push its final cost to $144 billion. That is an amount of money comparable to the entire International Space Station program, which cost about $150 billion. Critics argue this cost is far too high to justify for a population of just over 500,000 people. Furthermore, the environmental impact would be immense. A decade of construction in the Bass Strait would cause irreversible damage to a unique marine ecosystem. The constant underwater noise from piling and construction could disrupt the migration and communication of whales, while also harming valuable commercial fisheries for southern rock lobsters and scallops. So we are left with a monumental question. Is the Tasmania Bridge a visionary piece of nation-building infrastructure, a bold statement of human ingenuity against the forces of nature? Or is it a dream too vast, too expensive, and too dangerous to ever become a reality? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this look into the world's most extreme engineering projects, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update.